Reformed Church. Uh, I'm going to submit this as an opinion, but I still think it's an opinion worth like worth sharing because even um, despite the fact that this particular verse that I just want to share with you is an opinion, the the concept is correct, and the concept is what uh, Miss Lindsay was just praying before. Miss Lindsay was talking about she's she said. Um, to not focus like on the manifestation itself because like the manifestation doesn't happen by focusing on the manifestation itself but by fo- focusing on the Lord and then the manifestation happens, right? Um, and I'll, I'll make this really brief. I could, I could teach a whole message on this. It, it's just a really cool concept that actually I learned sort of recently that on one hand, um, I'm going to say this again just for those that don't know, but we know here things that we've taught about the temple, right? And how, how the temple looks like a woman lying on her back and all that, right? I just repeat that all the time just for people that don't know. But the temple, actually, if you look at Solomon's temple when he built it, it actually looks like it has a head, it has like a belly, it has legs, it has like uh, a basin of water that are right by the feet of the temple to show like the washing of the feet of the church. It's got um, all these different, like it's got eyes, it's got a bed that it's laying on. I mean, literally, like if you read in a literal translation, the translation of uh, Solomon's temple and the building of it and everything, if you want to read that, I think it's like First Kings chapter somewhere around chapter 6 and 7, and all 2 Chronicles chapter uh, 3 and 4, somewhere around there. Uh, but it, the, the actual translation of that is that the temple actually has a bed around it. That's the actual word for it. Uh, the, your Bible might say chambers, probably because they, they figured it didn't make sense to translate it bed around the temple, but it actually they should have just translated it bed. Uh, so anyway, it definitely the temple looks like a woman lying on her back. But here's the interesting thing you've heard me teach on before. The two eyes of the temple, which are represented by the two cherubim, right? They have the law, uh, it, the the Ten Commandments in specific, but the Ten Commandments are just to represent there the law, like the New Covenant law, and is between the eyes of the temple. And both the eyes of the temple are turned inward. The cherubim are actually turned inward in the Holy of Holies, which is the the head of the temple. The cherubim are turned inward, and they're looking. They're just looking at the law that's in between in between them. And that's why actually the Bible says in Deuteronomy six to keep the law between your eyes, which is essentially a uh, a symbolic way of saying, keep the gospel in the midst of your heart. Between your eyes, your eyes are, are, is, uh, your brain essentially is called the eyes of your understanding in Ephesians 1. So to keep the law between your eyes would mean to keep the gospel in the midst, in the middle of your heart, right? So that's what the, law, the, the, that's what the, the, uh, the uh, temple is doing. The temple is laying down, which is you know, just showing her rest, that she's not working herself, but she just has, has her attention on the gospel. Right, the, the new covenant law of God, uh, which is in the midst of her heart. But here's the cool thing, that there's actually there's bread on the inside of her belly, like the belly portion of the temple. There's bread, and there's um, ten, I believe, ten tables with uh, loaves of bread on each of those ten tables, and then there's a, ten lamps that correspond to each one of those tables. And the, the bread is called the show bread. Um, more, literally translated, it means the face bread. Because, and the reason why, you make, why, why is it called face bread? But it's called face bread because in Hebrew, the word face is kind of like, we, we would say in English, like, um, like, uh, like I'm facing something. You're not actually talking necessarily, like you're not referring to your face. You're saying I'm facing this, like, like my face is toward this. And the word face in Hebrew is sort of like when we would say I'm facing it. It means like it's before me or I'm beholding it, right? Like I'm facing it. That's why actually a lot of, in our English Bible, if you see the word behold, sometimes it's the word Hebrew word face, sometimes. So showbread, that's why they translate it showbread, like bread to be shown to you, bread to be seen, right? That, that's what it means, but that's why it's face bread. Bread to be faced, you could say, bread to behold. And so this bread, which we know means life, in the belly of the temple, right? So you can already see where this is going, right? Bread that's on the inside of the temple, but it's called face bread. It's called bread to be faced. In other words, bread to be seen, bread to behold which is why there's a lamp to correspond to each one of those loaves of bread on those tables, because the lamp is referring to the truth of God that is the truth of God inside of us is showing us the life of God that we have inside of us. He's saying, look, face this bread, see this bread. That's why the lamps are showing uh, in, in, uh, before each one of those tables of bread. And then on top of this, the Bible says the lamps are to shine before that holy of holies place, which is to represent the head of the temple. So, again, I could go on and on about this, but the, the, the lamps are said to shine. They're shining to show the bread so that you can face the bread and see the life of God that's on the inside of you, but it's said they're to shine 
before what's called the oracle or the holy of holies there, which is representing the head of the temple. That means that the truth of God is meant to shine for the sake of your head, to show the bread so that you can face, so you can behold the bread that you've got in your belly. So that's a cool thing in and of itself. But the last point I want to make with this, which is why I want to read you this verse, is that the temple is laying down. You guys know, right? The temple kind of is laying down, I guess, with her, like her knees up, like in a birth position. And uh, between the knees in the Bible or upon the knees is like the place of birth. Job referred to when he was born as being, uh, he was brought upon his mother's knees. And even, I think it was Rachel, referred to her maid giving birth to a child for her in her place and saying, she will birth upon my knees. So the knees is like the place of being born, right? Or between the knees. And um, on top of the knees of the temple, which are the two pillars, the two pillars would represent sort of like the, ca- the, 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 the shin almost uh, of, of the, uh, the temple. There's fruit, pomegranates, right? On top of the knees to show like a birth coming forth, right? We, we know all that, right? So there's like fruit there. But the temple isn't facing the fruit. The temple isn't, like her eyes are on the gospel, which her belly is revealing to her. The, the, gos- the, the, the gospel being those lamps. The lamps are revealing, showing the bread, and the temple is meditating on that good news. Just the simple fact that I have it. I have the bread. I have the life. I have this glory inside of this earthen vessel. I have these things. Jesus, this is finished. Jesus did this. And relating to what she has, not hoping for something to get something from God, but just relating to it and seeing it and seeing it and meditating on it. And all the while she's bearing fruit while not looking at the fruit. You see, like the fruit, this is where what Miss Lindsay said before made so much sense and it brought all this up to me. That the fruit is not born by you facing it. The fruit is born of the life of God on the inside of you by you facing the bread that's in your belly. That's what God wants you to face. That's why it's called face bread, right? Show bread, beholding bread, bread for you to see. And Elijah, when Elijah, and I'm going to stop right here. This is just the verse I want to read. Elijah, when he was, uh, he called for a drought that there would be no rain for three and a half years. Now, God told him, I'm going to send rain. So God gave Elijah a promise that he was going to manifest rain. Now, this, is the, this verse is opinion. I think there's something to it. Otherwise, I wouldn't share it. But you can take this particular verse as opinion. Everything I just shared with you is not opinion. This particular verse, you can take this as somewhat opinion for right now. But it's 1 Kings 18.42. 1 Kings 18.42. It says, in Ahab, actually, really, reading verse 41, says, Elijah said to Ahab, go up and eat and drink, for there is the sound of an abundance of rain. Because uh, the rain was coming, or going to come, but there was not yet a cloud in the sky, though, just so you know, at this time. Um, there was not even a cloud there yet. But Elijah was told by God that there was going to be an abundance of rain. So verse 42, so Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, which is a, a mountain, and then he bowed down to, on the ground and put his face between his knees. Now, if you know the story, Elijah keeps checking, sends his servant to keep checking if the rain is coming. Check, check, check. He was told there's an abundance of rain coming. And to some extent, Elijah believed it, but kept checking on the manifestation constantly to say, is, there, is the rain coming? And he would send the servant, and the servant would say, I don't see any clouds. And you come back and tell, tell Elijah that, then Elijah said, go check again. And he'd go check again for the manifestation. I don't see anything. Come back and report that to Elijah. He did this, I think it was seven times. As It seems like a lot of things are seven times in the Bible, right? <laughs> I'm sure for good reason. Um, and then the last time he sent his servant, then the servant finally said, oh yeah, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. And he saw a cloud in the distance, went back and reported to Elijah finally. Oh yeah, okay, the thing the Lord told you, I can actually see it now. But Elijah checked for that seven times before he actually got a report back that, he could finally see something, even despite the fact the Lord had already told him that he was sending an abundance of rain. Elijah kept checking. And I, this is the part where, again, I'm going to submit this as an opinion, but I think there's definitely something to this. That in the midst of him checking constantly for the manifestation, is it there? Is it there yet? Is it there yet? Is it there yet? Did anything change? Did I see anything change? Did I see anything change? You want to always check for the change of the manifestation. Did I, did I, do I see the fulfillment yet of what God's been telling us? You know, Over and over and over again, while he was doing this, it says that he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees, which would be the place of birth, right? 
So it, it's like the temple. Instead of the temple just meditating like this and being shown and revealed the, the bread that's in her belly, instead of her facing the bread that's in her belly and what she already has, and just letting the fruit just come, because it will come. And especially the Lord tells you, hey, listen, fruit's going to come, fruit's going to come. Instead of doing that, what does he do? Unlike the temple, Elijah goes like this and puts his face between his knees. Is it coming? Is the rain coming yet? Is it coming yet? Is it coming? Is the manifestation yet there yet of what I already have been told will manifest through me? Face between the knees would be quite the opposite of facing the bread. Facing the bread and having that truth revealed to you of what's inside of you, what you already have, and letting your meditation be on those things, and then the fruit comes from that. But just like Miss Lindsay said, the manifestation doesn't come by focusing on the manifestation itself. And checking on the manifestation, being consumed with the manifestation itself, is not how the manifestation comes. You need to be consumed with the bread that's on the inside of you. You need to be facing the bread that's on the inside of you, because that's why he calls the bread that that's in the belly of the temple. So anyway, I, I thought that was really cool. Everyone understand what I mean by that, by the whole facing, you know, putting your face between your knees rather than facing the bread that's on the inside of you. Uh, the temple is not in this position. The temple is just relaxing and enjoying the things that God has richly given her to enjoy that live on the inside of her. We hope you enjoyed this message from Reform Church. If you have, please share this with someone else and help us get this unpopular message to the world. If you'd like to support Reform Church, you can do so at reforminus.com slash give. Also on our website, you can take advantage of our free messages, articles, and even full discipleship courses. Start reforming your mind now at reforminus.com.